Hi, I'm Robert Gardner. We're going to show you a simple way of working the shoulders if you don't have a massage table or a massage chair using simple furniture you'd find in most of your homes. We're going to show some work you can do in the absence of a massage table or even an official chair. So we're just using an ordinary house chair. She's facing forward so she can straddle the chair and then we're using pillows to cushion. As she leans forward, you can see that's gonna provide some cushion on her front. To be able to allow her neck and head to release, I'm actually gonna have her back off a bit. I'm gonna lift a pillow and see if she can lean forwards with her. There you go. Her arms are forward. It allows her head and neck to rest. And if I wanna to get to her upper back, I'm able to move the hair to one side and be in the back, in the posterior, so I can come in on either side. You'll be careful if you apply any pressure to the neck because you don't want to push them forward into the chair. Also, if your chair is high, meaning it's high off the ground, you don't want to push the chair over. So you're going to be mindful of the pressure. She's able to brace with her feet slightly out to the side as I push forward. My thumbs are guiding into paraspinal muscles. I placed my foot on the chair because that felt comfortable. I'm going to glide in on one side using my foot to hook in on the chair, leaning to one side around the back around the shoulder blade and then slowly I'll reverse sides down the back more into her low back her lumbar along the paraspinal muscles one palm at a time and thumbs either side of the spine gentle reinforced. You'll notice that I'm not using the point of my thumb, I'm using the pads. You need strong hands long term. If you find you can't use quite enough thumb support, you can make this entire line flat. So it's a little bit of palm and thumb at the same time. Both sides into the upper back, into the shoulder blades. I'm going to hook the heel of my palm into the rotator cuff. Lean in a little more to the thenar eminence right in there. It's a good way to shake that out. Can switch sides. Opening this area of infraspinatus all soft, fleshy, right on top of the shoulder blade. In this instance, I'm gonna have her sit up. She can put her arms on the back so she's holding the pillows there. I can reach into this portion of the upper back around the shoulder blades. I'm using this pinching motion in here. My fingertips are right on top of levator scapula, right in there, this junction. And I'm actually going to work my way around. We showed this guy, but now that I'm around, I can actually have her hold the pillow with her left arm. Her right arm is down, so I can allow this to move around. And I can hook into that rotator cuff again. I'm watching her facial expression, seeing that it's not too much pressure. She's a little more tender on this right side. Right in there. And that one's back down. I'll reverse sides again. I can hook in, allow her arm to rest, shake it out. Encourages her to let go when I move the arm this way. Allows me to hook the heel of the hand into the shoulder blade. I'm right on top of the scapula, right on top of the shoulder blade. Heel of the hand right into the rotator cuff. 
And again, arm is back up. I'm gonna have her guide her forehead down to her forearms. I move the hair out of the way. And I'm working from the front now. I can reach the thumbs around the traps, around levator scapula. Again, looking for movement, I can get into the shoulders, around the deltoids. Some light hand work, rotation on the arms. It's like grabbing the muscle and rolling it around the humerus, around this upper arm bone. And thumbs either side of the neck, a little higher. Make sure that you're to the sides or to the back, to the posterior. You don't want to go into the front because of the carotid artery. You want to go slow within a range that the receiver can take. This is more tense. I can tell she just sighed as I was getting into something that was tight in here. And you breathe. I encourage them to breathe. Sometimes with my own breathing, I'm able to hook into the suboccipitals. I've lifted one leg and placed it on the chair because I can pull a little bit more with some force. She's protected and safe. The chair isn't going to roll forward. And even if it did, it would be into me. So I can block, I can work the scalp from this side, a little shampoo. Since her head is comfortably forward, I can lean in one side with the forearm. If this is not enough pressure, I want something more sharp. I can lean in and then slowly increase the elbow pressure as I lift the arm. It's a little more sharp there. One side. Then slowly to the opposite side. Same thing, upper back. All soft and fleshy. One side of the spine at a time. If this is broad and I want something more sharp, again, I can point, which means in this case, I slightly changed position. I lift my hand and elbow to lean in. I think she wants a little more here. So I'm gonna come around, I'm gonna grab one arm. I'm gonna invite her head back and down where it was. And now that I've opened up this one side, I'm gonna give her a little bit more pressure into this junction. I'm going to open this up, moving her arm. I call this a water pump. I'm gonna grab around the wrist. I'm gonna lean in with the forearm, one side of the spine, and then gently I'm lifting the arm. I can move the elbow a little bit higher. I'm right along one side of the spine. With this then double-handed grip, I'm able to move around, inviting an opening there right at the top of the upper back. If you want the one hand version, you can do that as well. Builds up to something a little bit more intense. We're gonna have this arm back down and we're gonna switch sides. We make sure again, their hair is out of the way for what we're doing. And holding the opposite arm Again, I come up, shaking it out. I'm gonna lean in on one side. I got a good grip, decent grip around the wrist. I lean in. The side of my body, even at my leg, is embracing her back. People like this passive body contact. It feels very secure, warm, receptive. My elbow is right at this junction, at the top of the shoulder blade to the neck. I'm gonna grab with the other hand. Gives me a little more mobility through the arm. I'm guiding my body weight into 
her upper back. And if I want the one hand version, find a good spot and I lean in, giving some lift. I'm going to allow her to keep her hands and arms forward so she can allow her head to rest just like before. I get a interlaced fingers grip. The heels of the palms are going to go to either side of the neck to press, trying always to find an easy ergonomic way to apply pressure. And I believe that she's open enough for this. We'll try and see if we can put one and then two forearms in the upper back. I'm not pressing on the head. The head is just gently resting. You wouldn't want to press her neck, her head towards the chair. That would probably feel uncomfortable. This is a little more broad. If I decided that I could get a little more pressure, I could lift the elbows. It doesn't seem biomechanically to fit quite as well, so I'm going to switch just to one side. Very tender. Good spot here. I can feel tissue and I feel it start to soften as I lean in. I'm going to give a little more oomph. I sometimes call this turning it up to 11 as I can lift the elbow and slightly more pressure. As long as it's flesh in the back, in muscle tissue, fine to press into. Very few contraindications, things you're not supposed to do. It's safe for most receivers. You can see that little bit of increased blood flow. I'm going to reach in with the other elbow, opposite side. If I need more of a point, I simply lift the hand so the elbow is more pointed on either side of the spine. You'd never press into the spinous processes at the most posterior. You can see these guys right there. You'd never press on bone. It wouldn't feel good. And you're not going to soften it. But the muscles around are what pull on the vertebra. And we're trying to release those guys. Releasing postural strain. Releasing muscle tension around to the back and this guy both hands at the same time heel of the hand in the rotator cuff hooking in shaking that guy out opening it up and pressing on either side if you decide to end with a little bit of tapotement a little bit of tapping I'll often come in one side of the spine, second side of the spine, if you decide to come around and hook into that junction there between the shoulder blade and the neck. Some receivers don't always like this. You can always try a little bit and ask the person, but I find it to be a good way to finish as it breaks up the rhythm you had previously. Then I'll fan across the back, usually placing my hands at center and thanking Karina for working with me today. Thank you for watching. I'm Robert Gardner. You can visit my website, robertgardnerwellness.com, to download your free time massage workbook.